stopped it as well. And oh! Lethal! 49-48, five seconds left. Yes! Nola wins the game! They all lifted, they all handed over. What a play here from top there. all right now. Huge, that is a back. base trade and a half. I don't know if they knew that lunch was there in the lobby, but what a play from Tox. It's not over. Boy, in a 1v1 here, they get hit by grenades. The grenades are coming in. ACG, no shield, top in. Oh, and Lethal gets taken down by Stun Down. Reciprocity are your HCS Invitational Champions. Now, if those clips didn't get you excited, I don't know what will, because we've got an oldie, but a damn goodie. It's Halo Town, baby. And we're not talking the new stuff, no, we're talking vintage Halo goodness like Halo 3 as it took center stage at South by Southwest. Welcome to Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into different esports throughout the week. Mm, indeed. So there were obviously a few tournaments at South by Southwest. And first up, we got to start with the pro tournament, which was Hello Hype. We've got a special guest calling in in just one second. But until then, let's get you caught up with these highlights. Well, but straight sick is the man to watch. He's sneaking in behind neighbor, and this will be a big kill for him. Picks up one, you can see there's another player in the open purple, needs to hit a crazy oh! shot! And oh, oh, we called it! Wireless snipers again, which is a bit surprising. Usually you have see a squad like Tox when they have oh! That was nasty! You then get to dictate that pace, and it is against, it's up to the enemy team at that point to say, okay, we have to fight out what? of this, but that is a triple kill for Pistola with that rocket connecting. Down to finish the last kill. Basement, like we said, text with Halo there. Oh, oh boy, the fadeaway jumper from oh, APG. We do coming under all sorts of pressure. You can see he's the last one alive here, but a big kill here on the flag carrier. Looking for a second kill here. Roy is looking to do something as well. Oh! Lethal, 49, 48. Five seconds left, yes. Stola wins the game! Lunchbox finally cleaned up there. That's gonna leave one of the members of Denial to try and return that flag, but Pistola's there to react, and he's gonna be able to recover it. That flag's gonna be still out for Denial, and a great stick from Ola. That's follow-up that you want. Pump? Oh, you know he was happy about that <laughs> one, man. And what a time to watch some Tox POVs, because all we oh. saw is snipe down, ripping faces after Lunchbox. Oh, oh! oh my god! What is happening here on Narrow? Snipe down's a monster! Can't find anyone though, where did Tox go? They all lifted, they all cannoned over. What a play here from Tox, they're all right now. Huge, the that, that is the a map. base trade and a half. I don't know if they knew that lunch was there in the lobby, but what a play from Tox, it's not over. Boy, in a 1v1 here, they get hit by grenades, the grenades are coming in. APG, no shields, top middle, and Lethal gets taken down by Snipe down. Reciprocity are your HCS Invitational Champions. And to talk all about that pro event and a bit more, welcome to the show, the coach of Denial, it's Laz Calas de los Reyes. What's up, buddy? Hey, doing good. Thank you for having me. Of course, it's our, our pleasure. Uh, I just want to jump right into it then. Let's sure. start, of course, with the winners. As we just saw, Reciprocity, they were on fire the whole tournament. So what kind of put them over the top at Texas? They were just playing lights out Halo. I don't know if it was all the Apex that Snipe Down was playing okay. or, or what, but you know, they seem to be having a good time. I think mental state's really huge. I know they were saying that was a big difference for them leading into this tournament versus the last one. They were just playing good Halo. Honestly, they were on top of their, their times. When they did get weapons, they were, they were milking it and using it for their advantage. Mm -hmm. Just that good, good Halo. I love it. Uh, it seemed like we saw some vintage Pistola and Snipe Down. So uh, what do those two players bring to the table now that we're back in Halo 3? Well, those two players, right? Yeah, Ola was just <laughs> on fire. I think he was just the MVP of the tournament. You know, he won the 2v2. He, you know, won the everything, right? Now he's won, winning the 4v4s. Um, he's a wizard, you know, and then Snipe Down was just... You, feel, you were feeling his presence whenever he would grab the weapons. He was always clutching up with the sniper. Mm. Now, uh, we'll talk about a bit more about uh, and just the differences between the games, but like, is it just that like Halo 3, you can kind of rely just off like pure mm. mechanics then? Like so any of these like pure mechanic players could just carry a team? Mm. It's a little different, right? Between like modern Halo and classic Halo, mm -hmm. but I would say definitely you can feel the presence of a talented sniper in Halo 3. Mm -hmm more so than maybe like the, the newer games because you don't have movement to get out of situations and you can really punish teams. You can clear out an entire team by yourself single-handedly and snowball it in your favor. So definitely there's 
the power weapon control for the top teams is mm -hmm. very, very huge True. in Halo 3. Um, I want to talk about talks a bit because yeah. it also looked like they've kind of barely missed a beat between versions, even with Frosty leaving. So what makes Talk, talk such a different opponent to go against? Well, you know, that, that squad, right? The, mm -hmm. Those three players that have been together for years, right? Mm -hmm. Snakebite, Lethal, the, that core team for talks have been together for a very, very long time, for years mm -hmm. now. So they're switching out one player, you know, Royal 2, you know, gets, you can't make it to the first tournament, they have Eco. Mm -hmm. APGs there, they flip one guy around, it's not a huge difference, and they've been playing with APG you know, for a long time as well, mm -hmm. so I think he was able to gel in really quickly last tournament, and now he's, he's still in the same roster, so he's probably found his home mm -hmm. um, as far as the current roster right now for Halo 3. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think, yeah, just their cohesion as a team, they have really good sense of how to play Halo. They know when to speed up, good when to slow have. it down how to play Halo. <laughs> Something yeah. you've been striving for your whole life. Bro, well, <laughs> why are you adding me right now? What? Come on, can <laughs> you see what I have to deal with here? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I, I, I do want to talk about your team uh, for a little bit here. Let's let's dive in here. So despite getting a high uh, seed though, uh, Denial struggled a little bit. Can you just walk us through the team's performance from like a coach's perspective and just overall uh, what went on there? A lot went on. Mm. Uh, this is a hard question. <laughs> Where do we answer. start? Hey, we got time. Break <laughs> yeah. it down, man. It's hard to answer this question because it's, um, you know, part of me wants to, it's a lose-lose because -lose mm. whatever I say can be used against me and then whatever I don't say can be used against me. So, mm. hey, here we are. Because um, the last thing I want to do is make excuses. We came there to win. We got mm. second place at the last tournament. We came in with high hopes, high expectations. And I don't know who said the quote that, you know, ex experience is what you get when you don't get what you wanted mm. we got a lot of experience <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is a good silver lining way to look at it right yeah uh, that's really from a coach perspective that was my mindset um after the whole thing wrapped up and we were out of the tournament uh let's look at the next one what can we do to improve mm -hmm. so you know a lot of little things how we warmed up at the tournament wasn't in our favor just playing at the phase the whole time and mm. um, Shelly plays on stereo and, and he didn't know against the status quo match he had his mix amp on uh, surround sound so he oh. didn't know he was he had a headache midway through oh, and we go back to the hotel and he's sitting there you know man I, I think I had surround sound on the whole time and so there's little things like that but the last thing I want to do is take anything away from these teams you know everyone played amazing reciprocity came out swinging we like hit a, a brick wall there they just played GMS day one and reverse swept it. They were hot. Mm -hmm. We came onto that main stage and got the hot 3-0 from them. And then status quo, you know, with Shelly and everything, you know, we were kind of down a player, but we didn't know that. We just thought, we'd, we couldn't figure out what was going on. We we're mm -hmm. trying to get our, our rhythm. And then we find out he's, you know, has headset issues. Mm -hmm. um, but again, status quo is playing really good. I don't want to take anything away from those guys. I've known Demon D and, and Cloud since we were kids in Halo 2, so yeah. Yeah, but so I, I'm just curious though then, do you now have to like work in that like um, uh, flow now? Like, okay, now there's there's a new obstacle. You know that, okay, there might be a headset. Mm -hmm. Do you now just make sure that that's right every time for him at a tournament? Or do you actually take them behind the scenes and say, hey, let's practice mm -hmm. with different headset settings just to make sure if that does happen again? Like what's the, the option to go in that route? I didn't even know that Shelly prefers playing with stereo sound. Oh. Um, I guess apparently mm. Ares does as well, and then the other two players on my team, Straight Stick and Commonly, they, I think they play with surround sound. And so we just, you know, when we're backstage warming up at that tournament, we were playing without headsets and no mix amps. We are just playing oh. free for all. And so, you know, we got our fingers warmed up, we got on main stage, and I guess Shelly just didn't realize he had the wrong settings on the mix amp. So he had surround sound, and it really brings the bass up. And yeah, I don't know, yeah, yeah. sure. It. Kind of just rattles your brain. Oh, dude, too. I mean, I, again, sound is very important yeah. in any of any game, really. Um, especially, especially when you're playing competitively, you need to communicate with your teammates. Yeah. You're also listening to the in-game um, sounds going on too. And I noticed that, like, while watching this tournament, and I guess just Halo in general, there's like a d completely different vibe from this than other esports. Like, you really need to heavily listen to what's going on in-game because, of course, you have the guy going. 
um, flag dropped, flag captured. You know what I mean? Well, like you need to, you need to trash talk. You got exactly. to get after you're trying to get all that too. So like even the casters, like how do you in interject as a caster into all of this going on in game? Like Halo is such a different beast completely. And I wonder what the vibe was like at South by Southwest for you guys, because I mean, from an outsider's perspective, Halo kind of just took a dip here in the esports world. Like it hasn't really had its moment in the sun. Like it was there and then it fell because other esports are shining kind of above it. And now I feel like it's on its way up. It could be on its way up again. Do you think that South by Southwest had the right vibe for you guys? And this is kind of what you want going forward? It felt good. Yeah. I mean, this is for me, it was my first invitational, but mm -hmm. I think the community definitely is, they're feeling good. There's a Halo 3, it's classic Halo. We've been rattling about this knocking on the door for a long time mm -hmm. and now we have an invitational so and then there's the dream hack event coming up soon as well i think the vibe was cool everything was really it was just it felt good do you feel like you would prefer these kinds of events like your tournaments to happen within festivals like this like south by southwest or dream hack or like just things where like other things are going on do you think you would thrive with that versus having your own individual events I'm not really sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I know, like you said, Halo th was thriving in the past mm -hmm. with just Halo, but things have changed. And yeah. I'll say the last few events have been really cool, having it in like DreamHack and then walking around, seeing other things. I think it gives the the viewers or the, the, pre the people who are coming in to spectate, mm -hmm. they have more things to do. South by Southwest was kind of like the same thing. You had the, the tournament and then right outside the convention, you had a million other things. Oh, and. Yeah. There was another room, there was two ballrooms, so they had the first room where you guys saw on the, on the stream and mm -hmm. all of the pro matches, and then a connected room for the free-for-alls and a bunch of other activities. Mm -hmm. I love it, I think it's really cool and, and it makes a, like a fun environment more approachable. Plus Austin's pretty cool too. Just to get to see that city. Oh yeah, you know, because I've been yeah. there plenty of times. I'm just, I'm <laughs> telling you. I believe you. <laughs> and funny common ground with our guests. But I mean, even with only six teams, uh, the South by Southwest Invitational was pretty darn competitive. Um, why are the top six teams in this game so close right now? Everyone's grinding. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this is a game where a lot of these players, yeah, a lot of the pros were pro back then. And then some of the newer players that maybe like, you know, on GMS, right? They, they've been playing it for years, so I think that might have something to do with the skill gap being like so truncated is a lot of these players have a lot of experience where they've been grinding it, and so now we're back at it again, and it's like, it's like riding a bike, and they're gonna try new things, but it's all there in their fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think like, um, a lot of people were, of course, excited that it jumped back to Halo 3 yeah. for this event. It's just regarded as like one of the best competitive uh, Halos out there, um, or the best. Now, going back to it, though, obviously having two iterations that you guys had to go through before that, or a few, um, mm -hmm. what is like, is there any kind of flow to relearning that game, or did the players kind of just fall back into it like muscle memory clicked in, or did you mm -hmm. have to work with the team to get them back into that flow? They, I know that my team started immediately grinding and they got in and they got their like 50s and, and the, the playlist right away and yeah. I'm in a week. So with, within about a week they already had it back in their fingers, their mind, everything was just connected with Halo 3 again. Um, I think if you played it, you know it. And if you're coming at it brand new, I'm not really sure if there's any pro players. I know Eco played Halo 3, he wasn't a pro back then, but I mean, it's still Halo. There's just still the, the yeah. same concept apply whether it's like Halo 3 or a newer Halo. Yeah. Um, you just have to kind of know the speed of the game is the biggest change, I think, would be mm. knowing not to play too aggressively because you don't have sprint True. and things like that to, to help you out. No escape options, yeah. Yeah, it's much more you got to be ready when you need to be ready and execute. Mm -hmm. There's no way out. Yeah. Positioning is super important then. Um, it seems like every scene has a different approach to coaching with some more hands-on and some acting more as manager. So what is the status of coaching in Halo at the moment, like in a broad sense? And what's your personal approach to coaching considering you're working with some veteran players? Yeah, uh, I'm a huge fan of film. So mm -hmm. I know okay. on my end, I'm Study always going... Yeah, I'm studying the scrims in the background. Um, I can't download theater games in Halo 3, so that's a kind of a setback. So it's really just streams. Mm. Um, 
and then yeah the teams are going to be grinding they're going to be scrimming so i guess coaching is just a lot of it has to do when you're there at the tournament making sure that your team feels good you're doing your job you're making sure you got the times ready you got to be on top of the times especially because halo 3 they're more dynamic mm -hmm. the weapon times can change if you like this called dirtying the weapon mm -hmm. and you can change the whole spawn system of the, the weapons um so yeah, I'm sorry, you were asking about like the preparation going into it. Yeah. Yeah. On my end, yeah, it's just getting the scrims ready and then going back, reviewing the scrims, taking down any notes and then just trying to talk about it with the team whenever we have time and then just mm -hmm. kind of rinse and repeat in between the grind sessions. Cool. Now you, you touched on something earlier too, uh, a little bit, I just want to expand on it. Um, mm -hmm. And the highlight pack kind of reminded us about it too. It's the importance of uh, that sniper in Halo 3. Um, can you just walk us through a bit more in depth of uh, how pivotal mm -hmm. a good uh, sniper can be uh, in Halo 3? Uh, yeah, um, trying to think which match. It was a GMS versus Tox here, like in, in they had a Narrows Team Slayer game and I believe Fantasy had the sniper and it was very, very close. It was tied up and they just they just took down a Tox member and put him on respawn. It was snake bite. And the sniper for GMS had the the sense, the, the spawn sense to know I'm gonna rotate over and catch him on spawn. And I and I believe he caught snake bite spawning on his flag. Mm -hmm. And he had literally only had two chances to get a snipe off. He missed the first snipe and then landed the next one for the kill and, and won the game. So you know, it's not just landing your shot and executing, but also kind of knowing where do I have to be, my positioning as a sniper, because if he would have gone to the lift side, maybe the game doesn't end like that. Yeah. You know, snake bite spawns, flag, jumps, lives, and who knows what happens, but he was there, he was ready, he executed. It's really huge in Halo 3. So do you, do you run strats around that um, beforehand, or is a lot of that um, decision making left up to the players in game? Mm. We, yeah, it's definitely like in game because at this point, a lot of the, the pro players, everyone already knows the spawn systems really, yeah, really well. They have true. a good understanding. So intuitively, we know what needs to be blocked to create a spawn trap. But then when you're in the game, it's so fast that you can't really, like those play calls, they have to come quick. So usually yeah. it's the player intuition just kind of off of the communications and hearing who's down, who's alive, what's blocking. and having that intuitive spawn system knowledge and they'll know where to look. That's true. Um, so far we've covered the serious pro half of this tournament, mm -hmm. but South by Southwest saw some other seriously entertaining competition as well. So when you come back from these highlights from the less serious side of South by Southwest, we're gonna chat with Kellis all about the Halo community. Hit the cutting, GB! Hit the cutting, GB! Taking his time. Here he goes. Ubernick down top middle as well. Oh! No! He gets flamed by Snipe down. Maybe he starts screaming three red gold. I jump out for some reason. It's 48 48, and I don't want to be mean, but I can't put it, put it any other way. I shit on him so bad. So bad. Busy with the sniper rifle. Is he going to try and finish this one off with a little bit of finesse? Looking for a no scope. See, there is a battle going down. And oh, oh, he does hit the finesse shot. A little smile on his face as well. So I basically had to make a phone call to my buddy DJ. Uh, I don't know if you use DJ. He goes by the name Dwayne Johnson. That's what he said. Doesn't matter because Walsh, he's old, he's trash, and he held the L. I don't care. I want, I can go neg 30. I still took the dub. Walshy, I'm going to bring it to you one last thought. Or maybe Rock was saying, hey, maybe, Gold Boy, you shouldn't make every day a cheat day. Here's GB once again at Golden Boy Pace. You can see him moving around Austin, He's Texas at full. this speed every day. This is no, there's someone behind He's him. under attack. He's Someone's under attack. He's been taken down. Oh, he's backing it up. No. There's back he's back backing it up. up. Dusky. Is he clutch? Clutch no, is dead. He went down. Gonna it. This is going to be it. Clutch is bringing it in. And who else? Captain who Clutch else? himself. Captain Clutch to bring in the final flag. Watch his team go up 1-0. <laughs> Game number four, not going to be another version of 4v4 on the rig and strongholds. It will be the same exact thing. If this happens again, Robin, you're spinning. I'm just never going to touch this thing again. Oh. I'm just going to say words hurt. Okay. Maybe we need a counseling session, Dave, after I slapped you in Big Team Battle. How about that? Uh, famous phrase that was like, it's like taking candy from a baby. But I think, I think what I'm going to say is, 
I took cake from that baby. <laughs> I always love that the Halo community has that mm -hmm. perfect trash talk. There's that feel good in the community. Um, and South by Southwest had a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to pro play, uh, Kalas, how do you balance those fun events with the serious uh, pro tournaments? Um, and like, do you think it's a good idea for the pros to be bouncing between those? Mm -hmm. um, or can it distract them by playing in like the fun Mm -hmm. versions not that competitive is not fun but like you know it could that be a distraction yeah i was thinking about that too actually before the whole thing went down and the schedule was revealed i was mm -hmm. thinking you know what's this going to do are, are pl players going to have to jump from one game to the next and from what i saw i think i know they had some of the matches after the 4v4s mm -hmm. and so the, that kind of helped compartmentalize so that the pros could focus on the tournament and then afterwards they'll have like some fun matches mm -hmm. or i know they did have i don't know if the big team battle i can't remember if that came before mm -hmm. um before. some of the pro matches yeah so they, they did a little bit of both um so yeah i don't know i think for mindset if you're having fun you're having fun and that yeah. can be in your favor um I don't think it'll throw them off too bad. I think that okay. they've, they're they really well practiced and you know, in like in their current game. So if they're there for Halo 3, I think they're ready for that. Do you like to see this more at like events in the future then, having that thing to kind of keep yeah. that atmosphere up? I think young me 10 years ago would have been like, no, that, why is there big team battle? Why am I watching this, this <laughs> newbie stuff? What is this? I'm here for pro Halo. But I think seeing uh, now, you know, and seeing how the community is now and, and it's more this is a way to get everybody involved mm -hmm. in my opinion and i love it i think it's great more of it cool absolutely i mean speaking of getting more people involved i mean it was awesome to see old favorites like golden boy back mm. into the fold yeah. from your yeah. perspective how important is it for the community to band together and support the game right now i think it's huge i yeah. think it's that's the whole grassroots kind of motto right now right it's just this community support and it was cool seeing washi back on the sticks again you know david was playing i think golden boy i haven't seen him play halo so yeah again more of it on mine i think it's great it's really good vibes now, uh, do, just looking at esports in general, there's mm -hmm. kind of two like vibes that um, esports are going for. One is like a very tight, strict, um, professional look. And you mm -hmm. have others, you know, like the FGC and Smash, mm -hmm. um, that go for a, a bit more of a community feel. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that Halo has more of that community feel now than it did back in that MLG Prime? Mm -hmm. Definitely at the last event, mm -hmm. um, it was it was kind of breath of fresh air to see the the casters, the desk hosts, just casual attire right mm -hmm. normally the past tournaments it's been suit and tie and yeah. more more rigid and it was kind of a cool little spin seeing them and kind of like just every day hey we're on the desk this is some halo behind us i liked it i'm cool with it either way i know they had some fun elements too that 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 wheel to spin and win <laughs> yeah. and uh even like the stage host just like skipping on stage like there was just more of a levity about the whole event which i enjoyed um just jumping in but what do you think that the halo scene needs to do to remain competitive in this world now of esports but in this world now of brs in particular halo br when yeah <laughs> uh i think bringing in a halo br would be awesome I know mm. 343 first was saying the only BR we're going to pay attention to is the battle rifle, but yeah. <laughs> missing a train there that's, you know, moving. Um, so I think, you know, bring in a BR game that's fun. And then as far as the competitive, the esports out of Halo, I think it's really important that we just, we pay attention to the community. Mm. Um, mm. That's, that's the big thing. It took a long time in Halo 5 for very specific changes to happen that needed to happen for the competitive aspect. And mm. hopefully moving into the Halo Infinite, we can just streamline these changes quick, listen to yeah. the community, and, and have a good balance. Um, if they run the future Halo, like this tournament, as far as you got the competitive side and you have the, the friendly, more casual, mm -hmm. and they do it well and they listen to each other, it's going to be a great future for Halo. Well, I'm just a uh, quick last thought on that. It, would you rather Halo moved, like, you know, with the times and turn into a BR, or would you always want to keep the game modes that Halo has now? Mm. Yeah, in my heart, it's got to stay 4v4. All right. It, it wouldn't feel like Halo to me. I mean, literally, all these changes that Halo's overgone, it's eventually, the community molds it to feel like Halo. But mm. if it went to 5v5 or, or Battle Royale format, that I don't know. It wouldn't feel like Halo. So hopefully right. they, I want to see it 4v4 competitive and then have a 
battle royale format on the side. On the fun. side thing, but not that's right. not the competitive. Right, right, right. Like enjoy the entree because it ain't as good without something on the side. That's yeah. something on the side. Could be BR. But Callis, we're almost out of time with you today. Before we let you go, uh, we had a fan question yeah. <laughs> for you off of social media. Scribs AF on Twitter asked, and this is a big question, just forewarning you. With okay. Halo MCC coming to PC, what is foreseeable? What is the foreseeable future for the Halo esports scene eventually moving to PC, if mm. at all? Do current players need to start learning mouse and keyboard ahead of time in case it does start to become standard? I don't know. That's my answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, plan on it. Right. Mm. Uh, there's a big, big community in, in PC. And I know someone, I, I think one of the, the casters had posted on Twitter a picture of the very the following day within 24 hours that Steam was going to um, accept Infinite and a bunch of people pre-ordered it off of Steam, I think. Or mm -hmm. um, So yeah, I think it's going to get a lot of people in. Yeah, it's, it's going to be huge. So I would say look into it. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're going to have tournaments stay on console. Maybe they'll release something where you, it's cross-compatible and you can... You know, that would bring in PC players to play on the tournaments for sure, but it, would, it yeah. might alienate I'm controller just, players. I'm for sure, that would be a huge disadvantage to controller players. Yeah, like knowing these players behind the scenes and yeah. that and what other games they play and stuff, do you think there would actually be a huge drop off of the mm -hmm. pros? Like, you know, are we losing half the scene if, if it does switch over? I don't know. I think mm -hmm. uh, the, the players, the pros who really have the fire in them, they'll adapt. They'll find a way because right. Halo's in their heart. If they got to start over a keyboard, yeah, the, their shooting and their shots will be weaker, maybe, but they have the mindset. They know how to play Halo, so it's not going to hold them back too much. Mm -hmm. Callus, man, I just want to thank you so much for all your time. It's been awesome to chat. Hello with you, and best of luck at all the upcoming events, my dude. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay, so Callus had a really interesting take on the PC Master Chief Collection, yeah. obviously, but <laughs> as a Halo fan, Brody Moore, what do you think? Oh, yes, because my opinion is way more valid than the coach's <laughs> denial. Uh, no, I, I think he made a good point that expect it. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the question, though, is like we saw, again, the newer Call of Duty released on PC. Yeah. And did the esports scene flip over to that? No, no but right? there hasn't. But OK, but has there been publisher backing and pushing of that? Like, will publisher mm. support happen? And if it does, will they go toward the PC master race as it were? It's weird. So it's like right now with 343, um, there's like kind of a, a mixed response. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the competitive side, I know there's been some gripes with 343. They mm -hmm. definitely weren't happy with the way 4 played. But then on just a fan side of it, you know, playing the game, that 4 was actually, to me, one of the best Halos that ever came out, mm. right? But it was the gameplay they didn't like because that's what they have to deal with the yes. most where I'm invested in the story. Then 5 was one of the worst Halo. Actually, it, it is the worst Halo when it comes to the story mm. out there. But to them, they enjoyed it way more on the competitive side than Halo 4. Well, yeah, so of course. 343 is like, I, who are they siding with? You know, they're going to release it on PC to please the fans, yeah. but will they then push the competitive scene over there? Well, it would it's, make sense that if they prefer the competitive side of Halo 3, because it was so litty. Like, that was the moment where I realized, mm -hmm. like, oh my god, online gaming is the actual tits. Like, it is <laughs> in incredible because yeah. that's what halo 3 provided right mm -hmm. so for us to be able to take that now run with it and give it to pc gamers and let them have a chance to thrive that is amazing and i feel like that could really be something it's just the feels okay. for people that have been playing it on console for all this time you know what if if 343 does want to move the competitive scene over to pc the one way i think they can convince everyone that it's going to be better and mm -hmm. more entertaining there is if they give the game to shroud <laughs> and let him put out a couple clips, and everyone's like, "All right, we need to have this game on PC." <laughs> the competitive scene is moving over. Shroud, you're can you're canceling Ninja. Sorry, you're Nin canceling who? Ninja. Okay, Brody. Listen, obviously you could talk Halo all day, uh, but that's all the time we've got. So thanks so much to Callus for calling in, and thank you at home for watching. Don't forget we're live every weekday right here, and you're gonna want to tune in tomorrow because we'll be sipping tea and talking Call of Duty Fort Worth. Well, well. It's gonna be fire. So for everything else, squad, hit us up on all the socials at Squad State. We'll see you later.